But also police say they have a suspect in Friday's robbery of a local bank. And state lawmakers take another step toward expanding gun owner rights. Brittany Williams has our weather and Zach Saxon will bring us the best in sports. So stay tuned. Your news about Asa starts now. Welcome to News Barasta. I'm Erin Ellis. And I'm Taylor Williams. Barasta police say they now have a suspect in the robbery of a local bank last week. Police investigators say they're looking for 28-year-old Eric Bernard Davis of Barasta. Davis became the prime suspect after several local residents identified him from a steal photo pulled from bank surveillance video. The robbery occurred Friday morning at the Ashley Street branch of BB&T Bank. The robber was described as wearing all dark clothing, including a hoodie and carrying a light colored satchel. Police say the man looked to be about six feet tall with a slender bill. And they say he drove away in what looked like a green or blue Dodge Intrepid. After a photo of the robber was shown last week, police say they received numerous calls from citizens identifying the man as Eric Bernard Davis. Based on that information, officers obtained an arrest warrant for his arrest and began searching for him. If you see Davis, police say you should not approach him and you should call 911 and tell dispatchers where he is. State lawmakers are trying to continue expanding gun rights. A bill passed in the state house yesterday would allow licensed carrying citizens to take firearms in bars and into churches. However, the bill would also allow bar owners and church leaders to ban them from their establishments. The bill would, per would permit guns to be carried in government buildings that do not have armed security and would also allow school boards to decide whether they want to arm its administrators and teachers. The bill still must be passed by the state Senate and then must be signed into law by the governor. 22 pot plants standing more than a foot tall each were discovered in Thomasville RV Park yesterday. Drug agents arrested Stephen Johnson. Johnson is being charged with manufacturing of marijuana. Drug agents said during the bus that Johnson was completely cooperative and handed over the plants willingly. The next time you decide you want to try a restaurant or visit a business in town, you may be able to see 3D photos of the restaurant or business. Yesterday, a company contracted by Google came to Varasta. The company, CS3, visited about two dozen businesses, including hotels and restaurants. The new feature by Google will be called Google Business. This will be a paid service by the business to be featured on the site. The CS3 team will next go to Macon and Atlanta. No word yet on when this new site will launch. Snow and ice for Georgia has seemed to come at a price for the state. The last snowstorm cost insurance companies $25 million in damage, stating in insurance claims. While this dollar figure is just a third of the total cost of the damage done by the first snowstorm, it still adds up to $75 million. Insurance agents are expecting a $25 million total to raise claims that are coming in. Agents are also hoping that the spring comes in early and that there won't be another snowstorm to rattle the state. A resident of East Hill Avenue was the victim of a burglary, according to Varasta police reports. At this time, police are unsure of who could have committed the crime. But they say their evidence supports their theory that drugs were related to the break-in. Police are still waiting for an eyewitness to come forward. The total amount of stolen property adds up to a loss of $400. When we come back, we'll look at the new fitness app that has locals going crazy. And find out why a local manufacturing company plans to close. Stay with us. What will you find at Valdosta State University? Challenging academics. Innovative hands-on experience. Over 100 fields of study. Engagement in a vibrant community. Caring mentors and friends service and leadership opportunities. Championship athletics. The full university experience. At Valdosta State University. 
So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to News Barasa. Are you still carrying around the extra pounds you gained from your southern Christmas dinner? Trainers have rated the top five weight loss apps. The iPhone and Android apps give diet and tips accompanied with workout plans. The South is associated with the highest obesity rate in the country. The Hot Five, Gym Pack, Weight Watchers Mobile, Run Keeper, and Zombies Run 2 apps make diet information easily available to Southerners with even the busiest schedules. And if that doesn't motivate you to check them out, all of the apps are free of charge. The annual Alzheimer's Day at the Capitol has been rescheduled to February 27 due to the recent winter storm. So far, only 17 advocates have signed up, and Bonnie Sales, Regional Programs Director, says that they can take a lot more people on the trip. Alzheimer's Awareness Day at the Capitol helps to raise awareness about Alzheimer's and related dimensions among legislators and state agency staff. Registration is still available at www.alz.org backslash Georgia. Registration will end Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Yesterday, Riverside Manufacturing Company announced it will be closing its Varosta plant in April. The shutdown will include the sewing, cutting, and warehousing operations in Moultrie. This will affect 140 of its employees. The company's CEO reports that its closing is necessary due to new federal health insurance mandate. The corporate owners came to the decision on Tuesday as part of the company's transition to using contractor partners. All other local functions will continue to be carried out at the company's Moultrie location. After last week's Technology Expo, teachers in the Lowndes County school system are working on new ways to implement technology into their classrooms. They say if they're fortunate enough to have funding to help cover some of these techn te technological expenses, the Education Special Purpose Location Options Sales Tax, or East Floss, is a sales tax that provides a penny tax on every dollar spent in Lowndes County. That money goes to our education buildings or technology. Due to Lowndes County's location near the Interstate Highway 75, the county grows its more floss funding than most counties. The mayor of Valdosta and city council invite Valdosta residents to attend tonight's council meeting located on the second floor of City Hall at 530. An agenda for the meeting is available online at the city of Valdosta's website. Through the Affordable Care Act, Georgia residents are eligible for multi-state plan coverage. The multi-state plan program allows individuals to seek non-emergency care from providers in their network around the county. Multi-state plan coverage is currently applicable in 30 states and D.C. In order to see the plans that are available for you, apply for the health care exchange using your resident address. Georgians can apply at www.healthcare.gov. Did you know that more Georgia students are passing the advanced placement exams? A national report shows that 21.3% of Georgia seniors scored a three or higher in the last year. Daltrey County education leaders say that new statewide curriculum could be helping. However, lack of finances have only allowed 233 of their students to take the exam compared to 503 last year. Up next, our news for us, the weather might have us putting up our coats and taking out our shorts. Stay tuned and learn more.
The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News by Asta. Let's take a look at the weather with Brittany Williams. Brittany, what should we expect? Thanks guys. It looks like today will be a beautiful day with lots of sunshine and crisp blue skies. We're looking at a high of around 84 degrees with a low of 54 degrees and also not even the slightest chance of precipitation. Tonight is going to cool all the way down to about 54 degrees, so you may want to carry a light jacket if you have any late night plans. Although you may need a light jacket, an umbrella will not be needed. There will be partly cloudy skies, but we are still looking at a 0% chance of rain. Tomorrow, we will continue to see a high of around 84 degrees with no chance of rain during the day. But try to enjoy this lovely weather while you can because there may not be a chance of rain during the day, but we are expecting a 60% chance of showers occurring later on that evening with temperatures around the low 60s. And of course, with the temperature expecting to reach the mid 80s, the UV index will be quite high as well. Today's UV index will be at a high of six today. So if you're planning to be outside for long, make sure you stay protected with a good sunblock to avoid burning. Now let's talk pollen. Today's pollen count is very high. I advise all who have allergies to stay away from weeds, trees, and grass because they are covered. And be sure to keep all of your sinus and allergy medications as close as possible. Well, that is it for our weather forecast. Now let's go back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brittany. When we come back, Zach Saxon has our look at local sports. So stay with us. Children eat well and move a lot, and move a lot, and move a lot, eat well and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Children, all the healthy children. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. Opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship Athletics, Spirit and Pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Zach Saxon at the Sports Desk to find out what happened this weekend. Zach? Thanks, Aaron. The head coach for the Lady Blazers softball, Tom Sarah, has attained his 400th win as the Lady Blazers swept the Georgia Southwestern Hurricanes yesterday in their home stadium of Blazer Park. Sarah now joins only four other coaches in the Gulf South Conference history to accomplish this by joining the 400 win club. When asked about his accomplishment, Coach Sarah stayed humble, stating that this achievement was no reflection of him, but more so on his players and the hard work they exert week in and week out to win. Turning now to Vidal State Baseball, the player Mike Reed continues to stay hot as he's yet again the recipient of the Player of the Week award for the second week in a row. Head coach Greg Gilliam says he is not surprised with the performance of his shortstop, saying that Reed's a smart hitter who has a good plan every time he comes up to bat. The Blazers are hoping for Reed to stay hot as they continue tonight as they host Columbus State at 5 o'clock here in Vidal University of Georgia is starting their season off the usual way after having to dismiss Lowndes County native and starting strong safety Josh Harvey Clemens. 
Harvey Clemens missed the Gator Bowl last season following his second team suspension. And despite his all-star play that he displayed last season, head coach Mark Rick announced yesterday in a press conference that they have chosen to dismiss the strong safety due to a violation of team rules. Further details about the event have not yet been released, but this is just yet another disciplinary action that seems to be a regular issue for the Georgia Bulldogs as they seem to start each season with at least three or four suspended starters. Turning back local, the Wildcat Invitational took off yesterday again as Lowndes and Cook County took on Tallahassee team native Lincoln County in a neck and neck battle in both games that would come down to the very last inning. Cook County was able to rally from behind and pull out the win when they tied the game on a two-run single by their player Zach Folsom and they shut Lincoln County down the very next inning as Bennett came up to steal home on a wild pitch ending the game in the bottom of the seventh nine to eight. Lowndes County, however, was not so lucky as they fell behind early, giving Lincoln a large 3-0 lead. Battling back, Lowndes would end up falling short 6-5 after a leadoff double in the bottom of the seventh that would prove fatal as it was followed by two back-to-back -back hits to bring that game-winning run around a score. The Valdosta Wildcat Invitational will continue today as Berrien County will take on the Valdosta Wildcats at 6. And former Valdosta High School and University of Georgia star athlete Buck Ballou has returned back to his roots as he made an appearance last night as the guest speaker for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Banquet at the Rainwater Conference Center. He's the only quarterback to start all four years at Valdosta High School and he started his success early in his career and accomplished so many things from Georgia High School Player of the Year in 1977 and then went on to lead the Georgia Bulldogs to a national championship win in 1980. Blue encouraged those in attendance of the banquet to be a light in this dark world that we live in and that each of them should take it upon themselves to be the best person that they can be. And finishing up, we're on day 12 of 20 for the Winter Olympic Games taking place in Sochi as the United States has taken home a grand total of 21 medals with 7 golds. The action continued yesterday as the big time USA competitor David Wise took home the gold in men's freestyle skiing with a score to top the rest of 92. Also, the men of USA hockey team proceeded to the quarterfinals, quarterfinals to take on the Czech Republic. Team USA is well rested and they have not played since their win Sunday over Slovenia. While the United States has been consistently good heading into play, the Czech Republic has had an up and down tournament to date, losing to Sweden and Switzerland. The hopes are still high for the men's USA hockey teams as they hope to finish their quest for gold tonight. And that's your latest in sports. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Aaron. Thanks, Zach. When we come back, we'll find out what's in store for this weekend. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Valdosta State University. Encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering. A beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. Graduate and online degrees. And championship athletics all in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Although Valdosta is known for its beautiful azalea flowers, it has been designated as Tree City USA community for 28 years now. On Friday, 10 a.m. in the Pintum at Odom Library, but also Mayor John Gale would accept the Tree City USA Award on behalf of the city. That will make Barasta one of nine cities to have received the award for more than 28 years. Parking will be available in the surface lot beside the Oak Street parking net next to Sunset Hill Cemetery, the surface lot beside the Missions Building, and the surface lot behind Martin Hall or the surface lot at the University Center. Are you ready for spring? Well, the Daltrey County Extension Service wants to help. The 2014 Spring Gardening Series will start Thursday, February 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. Some topics that are going to be discussed are lawn care, organic and vegetable gardening, and pruning. This five-week class is open to the public and only $8 
per seminar and $32 for the whole series. Classes will be held at 125 Pine Avenue, Suite 100 in the Candy Room. That's it for our program today. Thanks for watching News Barasta. I'm Erin Ellis. And I'm Taylor Williams. Join us next time.